over the past weeks, we have been dealing uh, from Luke chapter 15. And coming out of Luke chapter 15, we have been dealing with lost and found. And we're doing a series uh, under that term, lost and found. In our series so far, we have dealt with the lost sheep. And uh, we have had two series in the lost sheep that is now posted uh, on uh, YouTube. And if you have missed it, you can go back into YouTube. And it's given a different dynamics uh, as we look at, at these parables. Uh, and we, the backdrop of what's happening here is that the, the publicans were murmuring why Jesus should be sitting with sinners to eat. And so he finds himself uh, answering them in three parables. Uh, and we explain what a parable is. Uh, and today we want to get into our third series, uh, and we're going to deal with the lost coin. The lost coin. Now, John Newton um, found himself in a slave trade ship, uh, and the experience he had caused him to pen the famous uh, hymn of Amazing Grace. And uh, in that hymn he said, Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound, that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I am found. Was blind, but now I see. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. When Jesus used these parables in Luke chapter 15, he's directing them to the Pharisees, uh, and he's appealing to their reasoning, their life experience. And all of these three parables... Uh, are dealing uh, with particular areas. It's dealing with repentance, restoration, and rejoicing. As we go through all three parables, you will see there is one thread line that is running in all of them. Repentance, restoration, and rejoicing. So in Luke chapter 15, uh, the writer is comparing 99 sheep to the lost one. And the sheep poses a value to the shepherd. And today we're going to deal with the ten coin and the loss of one. And the coin poses a value to the bride. And then we're going to continue the series as we deal with two sons and the loss of one. And the son there poses a value to the father. So we go to Luke chapter 15 from verses 8 to 10. And let's read those portions of the script here so we can get the backdrop of what we are about to share. And it goes on to say, Either that woman having a piece or ten pieces of silver, if she lose one piece, doth not light a candle and sweep the house and seek diligently till she find it. And when she had found it, she called her friends and her neighbors together saying, Rejoice with me, for I found the peace which I had lost. Likewise, I say unto you, there is joy in the presence of angels of God over one sinner that repented. Now a husband called out to his wife early one morning from the kitchen. And he's yelling from the kitchen, where is the salt? Where is the salt? To which the wife replied, where in the bedroom? You can find Detroit from a thousand miles in the air, but you cannot find the salt? And then he exclaimed, Detroit don't move. Yeah, it's fixed. Well, in the olden days, uh, trade was done in clothes, in livestock, in agriculture produce. And a coin was a very important and precious commodity of trade. And in this story, the woman here represented is a bride. She's a promised bride that is awaiting her wedding day. And as she is waiting traditionally, the groom would leave 10 silver coins. Each one of those coins was considered a day wage as a dowry to the bride or signifying a promise of prosperity. And we are accustomed to some of these terms. Ten is considered to be a perfect and a complete number. It speaks of testimony. It speaks of law. It speaks of responsibility. Completeness of order. A complete cycle. 
It speaks of divine order. So when he leaves 10 coins, 10 coins as a dowry, it's a promise of responsibility. It's a promise that our relationship has reached a place of completeness. It's a place of divine order. Everywhere in scripture that you see 10 is very significant. We read about the 10 commandments or the 10 plagues. On the 10th day, they will select a lamb that is to be slain or placed as a sacrifice. On the 10th day of the seventh month was the day of atonement when that sacrifice would be made. We read about the kingdoms of God that is represented by 10 toes and 10 horns in the book of Daniel and Revelation. We give a tenth of our income as a tithe. So 10 is a very significant number. So when this woman received 10 coins, it was very significant to her and what it represented, and it played an important role in the Jewish marriage ceremony. Are you with me this morning? So you will understand that losing one coin means that her dowry was incomplete. The loss of one coin meant to her that the promise that her fiancé made and the visible representation of that promise was broken because a coin was missing. It was very important to her. One coin meant that she was now left with nine. And so she needed to seek out and find that one coin so that she can bring completeness into what was taking place. The Bible tells us that the coin was lost in the house. The coin was lost in the house. When we learned about the sheep, the sheep was lost from the fold. And so the shepherd had to go after the sheep. But the coin was lost in the house. And the owner, this woman who owned the coin, it is now her responsibility. And she has to diligently seek it. Follow me this morning because uh, we're going to say some stuff. The coin cannot find itself. Are you hearing this? The coin cannot find himself, nor can the coin find the owner. Unless the owner seeks out the coin, the coin will always be lost. The coin belongs to the woman. It was given to her. But unless she diligently seek it out, it will remain a lost coin. Yes, the coin poses a value. It is part of the complete whole. It is part of a complete set. But unless that coin is found, it is serving no purpose. It really has no value. It's a lost coin. Are we getting this? You see, I tell you this morning that being in the house doesn't necessarily mean that you are adding value as to what is taking place in the house. I, I, didn't, I, didn't, I don't think you got that. The coin was lost in the house. It had value. But even though it had value, it was not serving the purpose of completing the whole. We can be in the house and lost in the house, which means that we are not adding any value as to what's taking place in the house. Woo! How many times we find ourselves in situations and in real relationship that we know it's not going anywhere. We are just in it for the wrong reason. Abusive marriages. But we are just in it for the kids. Dead end jobs. It is not taking us to our destiny. It is not our dream. But we are just in it because we need the money. Bad influences, bad relationship, difficult friends, but we have to maintain the status quo. I tell you this morning, you can be in the house, you can be in situations, you can be in circumstances and be totally lost. There has to be a refocus, a moving back to purpose to destiny, to dreams. It is not that the coin was not valuable. 
It was not that the coin was not important. But a lost coin has forsaken its ability to be a spendable, transferable commodity. Did you get that this morning? It had value to it, but if it is lost, you cannot spend it. It is of no use to anyone. So she has to retrieve the lost coin. Unless she decides that she is going to seek out and diligently, the scripture says, seek out the lost coin, she cannot complete the whole. I, I hope you're, you're getting the parable this morning. So she has to seek, she has to sweep, she has to search. Unless the process starts where she begins to sweep, where she begins to seek, where she begins to search, she cannot find the coin. The coin is important to her. It's a lost coin. So what's the very first thing she do? She lights a candle. She lights a, a candle. She brings illumination to her situation. She brings illumination to her condition. You cannot find anything in darkness. So in order to find a coin, the Bible tells us uh, that she lights a candle. You see, a lost man cannot give the right direction. When there is no light means that there is no sense of direction. There is no condescension of what is around you or what is going on. There is not an awareness of what is taking place. And so we can find ourselves like this lost coin that we are unaware of the season. We are unaware of what is taking place. You have value, but you are lost. You are not adding to the whole. And so you need to light a candle so that it can bring some light in your life. Follow it, maybe we're going somewhere with this. The, the next thing the Bible says is that she found a broom and she began to sweep the floor. Tell your neighbor, sweep the floor this morning. It's, it's very interesting because... Uh, she realized that this coin was not like the sheep where it left the sheep fold and she have to go. It's lost, but it's lost in the house. How do we find a lost coin in the house? Then we need to bring light to our situation. How do we find a lost coin in the house? We need to begin to sweep the floor. There is the old saying that, you know, new brooms sweep clean, but an old broom knows the the corners. I don't know if it was a new broom, it was an old broom, but sometimes we need to sweep the floor. Sometimes you need to sweep the floor of your life. That floor speaks about a foundation. Sometimes things can get so messed up in our lives, so messed up in our house, so messed up in our situation, so messed up in our marriage, that before long what is important, what is valuable can easily be lost. So where do you start? You start by sweeping the floor. Start by cleaning up the foundational stuff. Start by going back and realizing that I did not do this for quite a while, so it accumulated some dirt. And if it accumulated dirt, if it accumulated some stuff, what is going to happen before long? The things that are important to me, I'm going to lose it. And so I believe over this pandemic time, a lot of people have lost their period of life. They have lost their walk with God. They have lost their communion with God. They have lost their association with God. They are lost. They are in the house. But they are still lost because church has become very religious to them. They are lost in walking in a relationship, having momentum, being able to touch God and have God touch them. They are dry. They are broken. They are lost in their situation. You have to begin by sweeping the floor. There are things that must be cleaned up in your life if you are going to go anywhere. You have to admit to yourself and come to that place. I am lost. I am in the house, but I am lost. I need somebody to clean me up. 
I need to begin to sweep my floor. There are some dirt that is accumulated and the things that was once important to me is no longer important. The things that were valuable, that I cherished, I no longer have it available. I start by sweeping the floor. Where do you start? Sweeping the floor. Sweep the floor. Sweep the floor. Sweep the floor. Then the Bible says she searched diligently. What matters to you is important to you. What matters to you is important to you. The coin was not important to others. The coin may not have posed any value to any others. The neighbors were not concerned about her lost coin. Her friends was not concerned about her lost coin. The coin was important to her. It poses value to her. She lost it. And she was determined that I'm not just going to sit down in a lost state of mind. But I'm going to seek diligently. I'm going to go after. I'm going to pursue the things of God. What's important to you matters this morning. So when she found it, the Bible says when she found the coin, when she found it, she kept searching. Don't stop searching until you find it. She kept searching. When she found it, it's only when she found it, it's only when she found it, she called her friends, she called her neighbors and said, come rejoice with me. The coin that was once lost, I found it. Mm, I found it. But the focus here is the coin. Could I take you a little deeper this morning? The focus is the coin. The coin is a representation as one who is lost. And God acknowledges the value and the, and the importance of the lost one and seeks to find that one. That is what he's telling the publicans, the scribes, the Pharisees. Oh, house of Israel, you are lost. You are lost. But I will diligently seek after you. Because you are important to me. Until I find you. Could I tell you this morning that God is coming after you. He's diligently seeking after you. You're the coin, you possess value. You're the coin, you're important to him. You're the coin that makes up the whole this morning. Every joint, joint together, every marriage, supply one another. You're important in the body of Christ. But if you're lost, if you're lost, then God has to seek until he finds you and add you in to become part of that whole. The coin. Jesus is a reflection of that coin. And that's, this is what he's trying to tell the scribes and Pharisees. When we, the, as a coin, he is the exact image of the Father. And we are assembled together in Christ. The Greek word here, for, for that word image, is the word icon. E-I-K-O-N in the Greek. And it means to fashion something to photocopy or to have a duplicate. So when God created Adam in his own image, in his own likeness, uh, he was making a duplicate. He was fashioning. He formed him. He duplicated him in God's image, in God's likeness. But there is a, another word for image. I'm going to deal with a coin. Because the coin is a representation of the lost one. Hebrews chapter 1, the word character, C-H-A-R-K-A-T-U-R, and it means to stamp an image or to impress upon. Verse 1 says, God who at sundry times and diverse manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophet. Had in those days, or these days, last days, he has spoken unto us by his son, 
whom he had appointed heir of all things, by whom he also made the world, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person. That's the word I want to target this morning. The express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. What is the right to say? He is the express image of his person. If you go to Matthew chapter 22, and from verse 16, find that word there again. When the Pharisees, verse 15 says, took counsel and how they might entangle him. In his talk, verse 16 says, And they send out unto him their disciples, Hadurians, saying, Master, we know that thou art true, and the teacher of the way of God, in truth, neither carest thou for any man, for thou regardest not the person of men. The next verse says, Tell us, what thinkest thou? Is it lawful to give tribute to Caesar or not? And hear what he says. But Jesus perceived their wickedness and said, Why tempt ye me, ye hypocrites? Show me the tribute money. And they brought unto him a penny, a coin. This is what he says. Next verse. And he said unto them, Whose character and um, um, superscription is in this coin. It's a Greek word. Whose image is in the coin? Go ahead. And they said unto him, Caesar's. Then he said unto them, Render unto Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and unto God the things that are a God. Now follow me this morning. The image that is placed on the coin makes the coin transferable and gives it spendable value. Are you getting this? The image that is impressed, that is what the word character means, to impress something, to imprint it. So if you have to impress an image on it, the image of the king that is impressed on that coin gives it spendable value. Now he says, what do you see on that coin? He says, I see the image of Caesar. So the image that is in that coin represents the fact that that coin has value in the domain, in the kingdom of that king. Don't, lose, don't get lost here. So in the olden days, when they imprinted, when they impressed an image on the coin, and they impressed the image of Caesar, they impressed the image of the king on that coin, which means that that coin had value, could be spent in the kingdom of Caesar. It represented wherever it go, wherever that coin is taken, it represented the king. It had spendable value, that one coin. The process of bringing the coin to the place where it can be imprinted means that it has to be properly refined so that when it is placed in a mold, when it is placed under pressure, it does not shatter. Did we say you are the coin? So, you go to Malachi chapter 3 and verse 3. And the Bible tells us that the refiner of silver, he sits purifying the silver. And he shall purify the sons of Levi and purge them as gold and silver that they may offer unto the Lord an offering in righteousness. So the writer in Malachi is saying that the same way the refiner is refining the gold and the silver, 
is the same way God is going to refine us, refine the sons of Israel so that they can be presented in righteousness. How does the refiner do that? The refiner takes the silver and he places it over the fire and he sits and he waits and the fire burns out the impurities because the refiner knows that unless he burns out the impurities from the silver, when he takes that silver to impress an image on it, it's going to shatter. So he has to burn out all the impurities from the silver. A reporter went one time and asked the refiner, so how do you know when the silver is just right? How do you know that all the impurities has been burned out from the silver? And the refiner explained, when you can see yourself in the silver. When the silver becomes so pure and so clear that it reflects an image of yourself in it. Are you getting this this morning? You see, because that's what God does. God wants us. Let's, let's take this home this morning. God wants us to be a transferable, spendable, valuable coin. But in order to bring us to that place, he needs to put us over the fire so that he can burn out the impurities of our lives. Sometimes the burning out is a very difficult and hard thing. But unless he burns out the impurities, unless he can see himself in you, Come on. You see, I'll tell you this morning, God is not going to take you out the fire unless you can represent him. Unless you come to the point when Jesus looks at you, he can see himself in you. You are reflecting God. And then he knows when you come to that place of maturity where you are now reflecting him, he can take you and he can put you in the mold. Follow me. And when he puts you in the mold, because there is no impurities in your life, because it has been burnt out, when he puts the pressure to imprint you, to stamp himself on you, you are not going to shatter. You are not going to break because the impurities has been burnt out and you can take the impression of stamping himself on you. You see, a lot of people shatter and they break. When the pressures come in our lives, we are quick to give up. We are quick to run away. We are quick to throw in the sponge because uh, you are not able to go through the fire. You are not able to, but there are things in your life that are still holding you back uh, from becoming a spendable, transferable, valuable coin to God. Can I preach this to you this morning? Come on. So what does the writer say? The writer says that when the coin is no longer suitable for coinage, when the coin has not gone through the process, I want you to get the picture because when the, when the, 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 the bridegroom brings 10 coins and gives the bride, it was not just taking out 10 coins of his pocket. This coin went through a process and she understood the process. That's why it was valuable. She looked at the coin and she saw an image that was imprinted in the coin. When we reach to the point where God impresses himself in us, when he impresses himself in us, then we become an ambassador of the kingdom of God because we are representative of the heavens on it. So wherever you go, <laughs> wherever you go, people see Jesus in you. You are a good representative of the kingdom of God. Why? Because impressed in you is the mark of the king. Are you, are you hearing me this morning? 
imprinted in you is the mark of the king. Now go to 1 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 27. Paul writes to the Corinthians church. He says, but I keep, 1 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 27, but I keep under my body and I bring it into what? Subjection. Least that by any means, when I have preached to others, I find myself to be a what? A castaway. That's the Greek word, adokemos, A-D-A-K-A-M-O-S. Least I become a castaway. Least, that word means to be rejected. That word means that you did not come up to standard. That word means that there are still flaws in your life. It means that there are still impurities left. So when the pressure comes on you, when the stamping takes place, when the pressing takes place, you shatter and you break and you fall apart. So what does the, the, the writer do? He takes the coin and he throws it aside. You become a castaway. You may have value, but you are not serving the purpose. Hello, you are silver, hey. but you were meant to become spendable. You were meant to reflect the king. You were meant to have in your life imprinted Jesus. That's the purpose. He, he, he wants to take you through the process so that he can imprint himself in you. So that's why Jesus says, if you see me, you see the, the Father. How could he say that? He went through the wilderness experience for 40 days and he came out of the wilderness. And the Bible says he came out in the power of the Spirit. He didn't go in the power. He came out with the power of the Spirit. Because when he came out, he went through the process so the Father could be imprinted in him. So he says, hey, when you see me, I represent the Father. You are seeing the Father in me. He becomes transferable. He became valuable. So wherever he go, the crowd was following him. Is anybody following you? Is anybody following you? Or are you following people? You have to come to the place as a coin where you can take the impression of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords so that you do not become a castaway. I have value, but I am only good to make jewelry so somebody could wear me. Are you getting this this morning? Are you understanding the deeper meaning of this word? Because that's what we do. We are only good for people to wear us. We are only good to follow the crowd. We are only going to hang around the neck. We want to show. We want to glitter. We want to be displayed. We are only good for jewelry. But you are cast away. You are not serving the purpose for which God wanted to bring you into. You fail to meet the place so that the master can imprint himself in you. So what happens? God takes you back through the process and you have to go through the fire all over again. And we are wondering why are we going through situation after situation, circumstances and going wrong in circles for 40 years because you did not meet the standard. And some of us in the house, we go wrong in circles. We started this church 18 years and we are still in the same place for 18 years because you did not come up to the standard. You did not come to the place where you are totally sold out for Jesus. Sir. And when you are sold out for him, you commit yourself to him so that he can imprint himself in you. And when we don't come to that place, we become a castaway. We become a castaway. We are no longer a valuable commodity. We are no longer a spendable currency. 
And that's why where we go, people don't know we are Christian. We're ashamed to tell them we are Christian. We're ashamed to tell them that we belong to Christ. They don't see Jesus in us. We can be very religious. We're in the house, but you're lost. Don't get vexed with a messenger. You're in the house, but you're lost. You're not spendable currency. How many people have you influenced? How many people have you, have you won for Jesus? How many people can see your life and say, I've seen the difference in you. I've seen your walk. I've seen your integrity. I'm, I'm seeing Jesus in you. How many people have you done? Or, or are we boastful of the fact that I, I'm a Christian for 20 years? I've been going to church for 25 years. Are we just walking this walk so we can make it to go to heaven? Wherever we go, we must have the imprint of who Jesus and walk with integrity. Walk with integrity. They must know that I'm representing the kingdom of God. There's, there's an imprint of Jesus in me. When you see me, you see the Father. Woo. When you see me, you see the, I've gone through the process. You don't tell me about the process. I've gone through the process. When you talk about the hard times, you can tell them I know about hard times, but God has kept me through those hard times. Come on. When you, when you talk about sickness, yes, I've gone through the sickness, but God has kept me through those sickness. Because that is his word. He will walk me through. He will take me through the valleys and the shadows of that. But I'm still holding on strong. Hallelujah. I'm still keeping on, keeping on. Things may not be all the way that I want it to be. It is not all lovey-dovey, but I'm holding on to Jesus. You can still represent the king. Because they can see the imprint of Jesus in you. They can see the imprint of Jesus in you. You are the coin this morning. You are the coin. And the woman searched diligently. Diligently. So that when she found it, she now added to the nine. Hmm. And she had a hole. She had, she had a complete dory. Complete dory. And when it was complete, then she said, come rejoice with me. Come rejoice with me. One of the things that I found very interested in this passage of scripture, and let me close with this, is that None of the friends came to help her to look for the coin. Could I tell you this morning, if you want to know who your friend is, tell them, come and help you look for the coin. They were with you when you were drinking, when you were liming, when you were running down women all about, not these men here talking about, you know, we men, the men here don't do that. Eh? When you are having a good time, they were, they, were, they were with you. But when you are lost, <laughs> when you lost, are you understand what I'm saying? Where, where were the friends? But when she found it, she says, come and rejoice with me. Call them back to eat and drink now. Are you getting this this morning? If you are lost and you are in the house, then you need to begin to start to sweep your floor. If you remember nothing in this message, begin to start to sweep your floor. Begin to start to get your house in order because you will be going wrong for the next 20 years, if Jesus doesn't come at that time, in the same circle over and over and over, and it has nothing to do with the pastor or the church, you are just not cleaning your house. The woman had to clean her own house. You see, we want, we want the pastor to come and clean our house for us. But the woman had to clean, she had to find her broom, she had to get up, put on a light, 
and she had to decide that this coin is valuable to me. And so I'm going to sweep this floor until I find it. If you don't clean your own house, don't expect others to come and clean it for you. What does it say? Plain talk, bad manners. We want everybody to come and clean it. Start to clean your house. And if you start to clean your house, you will find the things that you once lost that was valuable and important to you. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the story of the lost coin. And for those that are going through the process of the fire this morning, we understand that that process is just temporary, it's important, it's going to bring us where you can impress yourself in us. Keep us over the fire. Burn out the impurities. For all of us, dear God, who needs to clean up things in our life. Help us to find a broom. To find a broom. Maybe we pelt it out of the window. We throw it away. Help us to go back and find a broom. And clean up the things, dear God, that are withholding us. The dirt that has been accumulated. We can no longer find our foundation because there is so much dirt, dear God. Help us to find the broom, God, so we can clean up the things in our life. And one, that which was once lost may be found again. That of value, that of importance may be found again. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Did you get that this morning? Amen.